I ordered a couch on Amazon and it has been out for delivery the last three days. Uh oh. I feel like that means that there's like a 90% chance it'll show up while we're recording. That'd be cool. I have like an unboxing episode. <laughs> an unboxing of my cheap patio couch. <laughs> I have, well, the dogs will alert. I'm trying to decide also <laughs> if it's like better to keep them inside or let them run outside. Yeah. Uh, on top of all of this, they've just started construction on two new houses across the street. Uh huh. What I was hoping for for my summer. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yeah. They've been building some flavor of house around in some direction of me for like years. And so it's almost like we're just used to the sound, you know? Yeah. You don't even I mean, hear it anymore. Beginning of the pandemic, they were building a house up behind us. So like I couldn't even, it was like, oh, I get to work from home all the time. I can sit on the porch. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me for it. This is my first um not my first time hosting, but I'll be doing all of the This Week in Tech History episodes this season. And I'm like, I'm pretty stoked about it. I love doing research. Like, uh, my dream job would be to write research papers, which is it's not much of a market for it. There's probably a gray market, black market for it, but I don't think there's much of an ethical market for it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's a cool premise, too, like just saying, like, what happened this week, basically, whenever, you know, and because there's always it's there's always something cool that happened. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I feel like this season, there's been like, a, I don't know if it's maybe just like the summer, more fun things happened, but I've found some really cool things. Nice. First, uh, the first rocket to launch that... Um, landed at the international space station sweet um, that's really cool yeah turn my turn my phone down i never have it up i don't know why it was <laughs> probably watching a tiktok or something yeah right. exactly uh yeah that's that's pretty sweet so the the first manned launch to dock on the space station what a yeah. trip that is like that we can yeah. do that. <laughs> and it wasn't that long ago. Like, I think that that's the thing that trips me up is like, when you're talking about tech history, it's not, we're not going back that far. No. Like the majority no. of these things are happening in the last like 50 to 60 years. The, the whole Moore's law thing, like, you know, we're going to be talking a year from now about like how the world completely changed with chat GPT and like, and it's going to seem like forever, but it's like last year. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the things I was reading the other day was like how long it took X number of users to adapt to certain products. And with chat GPT, it was just like in the millions within weeks. Yeah. Years from now, we'll be talking about chat GPT releasing in history. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect segue to Pac-Man. I know. I'm honestly very excited about this one. Uh, I'm a huge Miss Pac-Man fan. As soon as I eat that power block, you guys are finished! I like the little man. He's really he eats up all the other things, you know. How about that Pac-Man song that I hear around here all the time? Yeah, you sing it you sing it a lot, you hum it. <laughs> Indeed, and play it on the jukebox at full volume. Pac-Man, obviously one of the most iconic arcade games of all time. It was released in Japan on May 22nd, 1980. It was created by Toru Iwatani, who was a game designer at Namco. He was inspired by it after seeing a pizza with a slice missing out of it and wanted to create a game that was eating something. So he originally named it Puck Man. They did decide to change that before international release to avoid vandalization of the word puck. Yeah. Smart, especially, yeah. <laughs> You're marketing the wayward teens, man. You gotta <laughs> nip it in the bud. The game's design was meant to appeal to a wider audience, specifically women and couples, and is credited with bringing more women into the arcade, which helped set the stage for video games to become more mainstream. 
Pac-Man also established the possibility of product licensing and merchandising for video games. Morning, kids. It's a Pac-Man day with my crispy corn cereal coming your way. It's Pac-Man with marshmallows. Delicious. I'm Inky. I'm Blinky. I'm Pinky. I'm Clyde. We're the marshmallows you'll find inside of Pac-Man. And it even spawned a top 10 hit. Bill, please tell me you can find a Pac-Man themed top 10 pop hit. To this day, it's considered one of the highest grossing video games of all time, having generated over two and a half billion dollars just in quarters by the 1990s. Miss Pac-Man, my personal preference, started out as a modification for the game, wound up getting its own spinoff, which obviously went on to huge success. A perfect score in Pac-Man, 3,333,360. I feel like that's a missed opportunity to not just make it all threes, but whatever. <laughs> Each of the four ghosts were given personalities, which I never really realized. Blinky is the one named the chaser. Pinky and Inky, which are the pink and blue ones, were programmed to ambush Pac-Man. And Clyde, the orange one, just goes full random at all times. I've always wanted a Miss Pac-Man machine. We'll see. We had a really cool space for it in our last house and didn't buy one. Would you get one of the like head to head table versions? Have you ever seen one of those? Those always trip me out because it means somebody has to be playing upside down the whole time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. I mean, you talked about Miss Pac Man, which was the bigger game. Yeah. I mean, Pac Man, you don't have Miss Pac Man without the, the OG, but right. like, I think that's that can't get lost in the story is the the sequel you know and then the the improvement it wasn't just like you know pac-man 2 it was like miss pac-man i brought a whole you know leaned in even more and, and like the next iteration yeah. was you know so now they have you know two two discrete games you know so like from, from a business revenue opportunity like preference like you know all of a sudden they, they doubled their, their coverage there. I think that was a really interesting innovation in itself, you know? Especially if one of the things they were originally trying to do was to appeal to more women. How smart to make a woman character, because at that point there weren't really like character-driven, character-based games. Yes. It might have been meant to be an add-on, but I think like the marketing that they were able to do with it and turn it into like something even bigger than the original was pretty cool. I mean, you make a great point about the, um, about the character. I, I, you know, the, like Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, I think those were like the, the seed of, of different sort of genres of games, even, you know, moving forward with that, like sure. it, before, you know, it was almost like, you know, everything was some kind of like, space shooting thing where it was you know asteroids or it was you know defender or galaga or missile command or like name a game you know before pac-man and it was like this it was a rocket ship that shot other rocket ships or or you know boulders or whatever and so like not only was like the gameplay fundamentally different, but that you introduced an, a, a character that was just like this lovable, cute thing, yeah. you know, that was like rocket fuel for marketing, you know? I mean, it was one of the first games that like, you know, that things were licensed based off of the game. And look at, look at what that has done for game marketing in general. Like now you have... Huh. You can find a Minecraft t-shirt like anywhere in the world. Everyone knows about the Fortnite dances. 
you know, like those kinds of things. It's, it's, it's crazy that this, like, I don't want to call it simple, but like, like an, an early eight bit maze game was like the basis for the kind of marketing that's driven an industry that's like beyond what, you know, I don't think when they built Pac-Man, they ever thought that professional gaming would be an industry and look at it now. No, I think that's, I think that's, that's exactly right. And I also don't think it's a stretch to, to consider Pac-Man specifically a launching pad for, you know, even things like Super Mario Brothers, like that, because it became, it became character based. It was maze based. Versus, yeah. you know, shooter, it was, you know, it became a franchise. You had different variations. Like you can see the progression, you know, if you look at this as sort of the beginning, as the seed of, uh, of a lot of things that, you know, that came after that, it yeah. kind of branched in a couple of different directions, but like, it really was the beginning of, of, I think what we think of games today, gaming today. And, you know, like back to that, you know, the idea that they wanted to market to women and couples is like, like what a huge staple arcades were um, following that up, you know, like going to the arcade at the mall with your friends while your parents shopped or whatever. It just became like the catalyst for, I don't know if it was like getting women and young girls interested in, in something that was more like STEM related, if that was even, you know, what they were trying to do, but it's a company. I'm sure all they were really trying to do was make more money off of a previously underserved community of individuals, but it spawned a whole, a whole thing. It spawned arcade interest. I think it's really interesting because it's, it was risky, but it was a huge opportunity. You know, when you think of like the, the, the addressable market, right. <laughs> Just to put it in sort of modern terms, like there was half of the addressable market that wasn't being served at all. So it was like hugely opportunistic, but it was also, also risky, you know, um, to do something so different Yeah. and to try and say, Hey, there's no, there's no evidence that, you know, whatever women and couples are interested in, in video games, but there are a lot of them. So can we do something there? You know, it's like, yeah. it's really interesting innovation. When you think about now, historically, that's the game we're talking about. And we're not talking about games that were immensely popular at the time. You know, those things are sort of retro cool, but they're not, you know, game changing, you know, for right. part of the pun. <laughs> it was a good one. <laughs> um, and like, how often do you still go to, you still go to places and they have Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man, you know, you will still find those at random bars or, you know, like the resurgence of, I guess, barcades. Right. Catering to all the people who played those games as kids. And now we're like, oh, well, I can go, I can go drink and play games. Like what more, <laughs> can, what more could your inner child want? N not more. But those are, the, those are the kinds of games that are like still popular. If you, if you went into, if you went into like a, like an arcade bar arcade thing um, today, if you walked into one, what's the first game that you go to? Miss Pac-Man. It is. You go straight oh, to yeah. Miss Pac-Man. Yeah. Nice. I mean, like, I at one point, I I have contemplated getting like a Pac Man tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> There's still space. It's either that or it's a. I do really like um, pinball. Yeah, and that's kind of a whole other side yeah, of it. Yeah. So the place where I went to, where I went through my boot camp, um, downstairs from it was a barcade. So we would go down there, um, and they had a lot of retro games. I really liked. I think it was called beer man beer you're basically man. serving a beer you're serving you're bartending and you have to yeah. like slide beers down the down the table <laughs> and you get progressively more bar tops and they're kind of like situated all over yeah uh yeah that's fun i think i was always sort of drawn to those like massive like like car like grand prix type of things oh, where yeah. you sit in and you you know and because yeah. you know i wanted to drive and it was like you had gas pedals and pedal you know and the whole thing so like but they were like a dollar you know <laughs> it's like it wasn't <laughs> so like you had to like save up i was always drawn to that so i would like that probably 
if I had to do it again, that might be my go-to first, but then I would hit the classics, you know, like I would take a spin on Miss Pac-Man and probably hit Galaga either first or second. We have one of those, uh, the Nintendo, like the mini ones that they came out with that are preloaded yes. with a bunch of games and Galaga's on there. I play yeah. that a bit. It's a, I was talking to you, one of our coworkers, Victoria, and and she laid some pretty big claims about her um, her skill on Galaga. So you may want to okay, you may want to see okay. what's up with that. Okay, I'm be like, hey, what's your top score? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Start a Galaga channel. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll it. Well, it'll take place of the Wordle channel on Slack. Oh yeah, RIP. So, is it a hot take to think that? RPG games don't exist without Pac-Man? I mean, I think that they probably would have still existed, but what would what would have been the catalyst for it? You know, like there would have had to be somebody else who took a risk and how much longer would it have taken? I don't think it's a hot take. Somebody had to be the first. And it just happened to be a a pizza, a puck man. I wonder <laughs> exactly. I just uh, I wonder if you can draw a straight line to it if it, if it was more sort of like heavily influenced by but not a direct line like you know i mean especially given how advanced games are now it definitely set the stage for more character driven games to be developed yeah i mean even before i don't really remember because it was a long 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 time ago but like what the what the um home console timeline was relative to like arcade console things you know so like the atari nintendo progression you know into like playstations and that sort of thing like because the home the home bit was like as important of a catalyst in in the actual pure arcade game thing you know so yeah. and the reason i'm asking that is is because like there were a kind of going back to the original question, like a game like Pitfall, where it was just like literally like the dude who would like jump over like yeah. you know, quicksand and stuff, you yeah. know, was kind maybe you can make the case that was like, you know, prehistoric Legend of Zelda or something. And so like there was a, a different through line RPG. I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm going down this rabbit hole, but like. Well, I mean, you go from like Pitfall to like Castlevania to like Mortal Kombat. It's like every step that you're, every step that it's going, the characters are more developed, the storylines more developed, and I think that this is also like, Pac-Man was one of the first games to have a storyline, yeah, kind of built into it with those like the interstitials that have the like Act One, Act Two, and Miss Pac-Man and stuff like that. I guess as the gameplay improves, uh, the characters improve, the storyline improves. I don't think that any of that would have happened without Pac-Man, but it is crazy to see kind of like where the big jumps happen. Yeah, that, that is interesting to go back and look. And I think that's spot on. I think the, the, I had forgotten about the, the sort of storyline narrative through, through the games. I think that's a really, that's, that's something that definitely carried forward for sure. Yeah. And only expanded. And it kept people more like invested and interested in what the game is. You know, that's that's excellent brand marketing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. You know what it reminds me of, Pac-Man reminds me of is the band Kiss. You know what I mean? Because like you have this like genre of music and it's like glam rock or whatever, and there's glam rock yeah. and it's happening. And then Kiss comes along and it's like, oh, you haven't seen glam rock. Like they're like, now, glam rock harder than any other glam rock ever right. glam rock. And we're like, you know makeup and like kind of more or less pop songs but like the the whole presentation was like this you know serious you know yeah. thing and then became a franchise and then the marketing and all that like pac-man is the kiss of video games yeah still around still like appreciated for their art for what they brought to the genre that's a good comparison i like it <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe it's like could you could you like fuse it together and have like Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man, like have, you know, like Paul Stanley kind of vibes going on or like you could, you know, like put giant like 
spiked boots on Pac-Man somehow, like have a kiss edition and just do a total mashup. I wonder how quickly I could get that done with the <laughs> form. Like mid journey or right, Dolly or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. We did have in my boot camp there was a, a guy who made a Pac-Man uh with like pure HTML and CSS. That's sweet. Which is pretty That's cool. pretty cool. Yeah. We've kind of poked around a bunch of other things on it. Is there a is there a is there a clean bow we can put on this? Pac-Man innovation legend. Pac-Man is an innovation legend. And I feel like mm-hmm. that's a that's a fitting note to like kick off this this season with. Sometimes it's not the it's not the the craziest or boldest idea that has staying power. Yeah, and in this right, the simplicity of it, you know, the um, you know, innovation. I think really good innovation always comes across as simple, you know, and this is like that's a perfect example of it. Pac Man's Pac Man's legit. Yeah, Pac Man is legit. Look at it. Can you imagine? I can't imagine like being able to produce something like that that was so pun intended again, game changing. Yeah. Uh, this late into like the technological evolution. All right. I'm going to go buy a Pac Man t shirt now. Thanks for joining me. If anybody out there is listening and wants to send me a stand up Pac Man machine, I will put it in the bar in the bar, start my own barcade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and have a fancy new sofa to, to play it yeah. on. Thanks for listening to the Frontier Podcast powered by Gun.io. We drop two episodes per week, so if you like this episode, be sure to subscribe on your platform of choice and come hang out with us again next week and bring all your internet friends. If you have questions or recommendations, just shoot us a Twitter DM at the Frontier Pod, and we'll see you next week.